Uh, welcome back to our channel, Garba Gudi. And uh, my name is Dr. Vandana Ramanathan. And I'm a fertility consultant at uh, Garba Gudi IVF Center, Kalyanagar and Malapani branch. So today I'm going to be discussing about PGS and PGD. So PGS is pre-implantation genetic screening and PGD is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Uh, now these are two diff uh, the method of doing it is probably the same, but they are both done for two different indications. Now today I'll brief you on as to what are, what exactly these tests are and whom these tests are done. So PGS is that is pre-implantation genetic screening is when you screen uh, the number of chromosomes and pattern of chromosomes uh, in the embryo. These are usually tests that are done in the embryo. So when patients come to us with, uh, now in whom are these indicated? So there are couples who come to us with previous two, three, four failed IVF cycles. Uh, you know, some couples uh, come to us with recurrent miscarriages and they want to know why that is happening. So first and foremost, we have to, in such couples, we have to do something called karyotyping of the couple. Now karyotyping of the couple is when we do the genetic screening the chromosome pattern, number and pattern of the couple from their blood. So the karyotyping of the couple is first done to see whether they are genetically normal because some patients who have recurrent miscarriages, recurrent IVF failures can have minor uh, you know, genetic uh, issues which can lead to these kind of problems. Uh, second is there are some couples who come to us with uh, you know they themselves are having some kind of genetic abnormality or they have some genetic abnormality in their family which runs in the family so you know they come to us with queries where they are worried that the same problem can happen in the child so we have to you know do certain tests in these couples and for the embryos of these uh, patients to uh, you know confirm that the embryo is a normal embryo healthy embryo which is not carrying the same genetic abnormality as the patient or the family so that is where your PGS and PGD comes into play. Now, suppose a couple has come to us with uh, you know, uh, what are the indications of pre-implantation genetic screening. Now pre-implantation genetic screening is the old terminology. The new terminology for this is your PGTA that is pre-implantation genetic testing A stands for aneuploidies. So it is pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidies. Aneuploidies are basically where we see for the chromosome numbers it can be one a number more or a number less so we rule out uh, you know something called uh, monosomy or trisomy trisomy like down syndrome trisomy 21 that is then trisomy 13 trisomy 18 so these are things that can be diagnosed by doing pgta that is pre implantation genetic testing for aneuploidies in whom uh, which kind of couples are these indicated so basically in couples who have had previous repeated IVF failures, previous recurrent mister, early first trimester uh, missed abortions, that is early pregnancy losses, uh, you know, patients, uh, women who are more than 35 years of age because as age increases, the egg uh, quality comes down and these eggs have more chances of leading to aneuploid pregnancies, that is abnormal, chromosomally abnormal pregnancies. So these are the patients in whom PGTA is indicated. So what have, what do we do in this? We do either regular IVF cycle and once the embryos are formed. Now PGTA can be done only on day 5 or day 6 embryos. I mean it is better to be done on day 5 or day 6 embryos where we are taking a few cells from the embryo and sending it for testing. Now the report uh, takes uh, around 3 weeks or 4 weeks to come. So meanwhile the embryo will be frozen and uh, once the genetic testing is done on those cells, now this is just a representative of the entire embryo because you're not going to test each and every cell of the embryo. You're going to take a few cells and test it. So that will represent what the rest of the embryo's uh, genetic pattern is, like the chromosome pattern is. So this is what PGTA is. So once the report comes, only embryos that are euploid, that is embryos having normal number of chromosomes, will be uh, used for the embryo transfer. The embryos that come back as aneuploid, that is abnormal number of chromosomes, uh, will not be used and those embryos are better to be discarded because they, they are uh, anyways, uh, you know, chromosomally abnormal will not give you healthy pregnancy. This is what PGTA is about. And uh, whenever we do genetic testing of embryos and chromosome pattern, the sex of the uh, embryo is never revealed. It is only given as a normal euploid embryo or an aneuploid that is abnormal embryo. This is what PGTA is. Now, what is PGT, PGD? Again, PGD is the old terminology that is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. 
Now the new terminology is split into two. One is PGPM, that is uh, pre-implantation genetic testing for monogenic disorders, and PGTSR, that is pre-implantation genetic testing for structural rearrangements. So these are again split into two. And when is this done? This is done in patients who have come to us with a specific genetic abnormality in the couple itself, either the wife or the husband or anybody in their family is having that. In that case, we have to screen the couple whether they have the same genetic problem. So this, uh, the genetic, the gene which is uh, defective, the chromosome that is defective is first evaluated in the couple. And if they carry the same genetic uh, disorder, then the embryo is tested for that particular genetic problem. So that particular gene uh, chromosome problem is tested. So that is PGTM uh, and PGTSR. PGTM is again, like I told you, for single gene disorders. And PGTSR is for structural rearrangements of the chromosome pattern. So this is when any specific abnormality has already been identified in the couple. We have to do, then it is mandatory to do this uh, testing in the embryo because chances of the baby getting that uh, disorder will be, you know, likely likelihood will be more. So it is always better to get the embryo tested before that embryo is transferred into the uterus of the lady. So this is in brief about what is PGD and PGS. If you have any more queries um, on this subject, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on the number that has been given in the description uh, below. And uh, if you like this video and you found it informative, please do share it with your friends and family and uh, please do subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.